Uh, if you're just joining us, the Celtic starting 11 for this afternoon. Fraser Foster returns in goals. It's a back four of Hatem El Hamid at right back, followed by Bolly Bolangoli at left back, and the central defensive pairing of Neil Beton and Christopher Julien ahead of them. Scott Brown and Callum McGregor. Then we have James Forrest on the right, Ryan Christie through the middle, Mikey Johnson on the left, and leading the lane, Odson Edward. And Simon, when you look at that uh, back four, that's th three of the players are, are, are making their, their first appearance in a derby, and it's a, it's a big test, as you say. You made your debut at, here, and there wasn't a single Celtic fan, but you know it's, it can be the making of players. It certainly can, and that's that's why you know the players have been recruited to, to Celtic. It's games like this that they have to go and stand up and be counted. You know, you've got beat on in that back four as well, who they look to for the experience. Uh, from midfield to front, very experienced in this this fixture. So, yeah, it's a new experience for these guys, but that's why they're at the club, you know, for these games and, and to handle it. Well, Neil Lennon, of course, has played in plenty of these games. He's also managed in a fair few. He held his pre-match press conference in Leniston, having travelled home from Sweden, where the team recorded a very impressive 4-1 victory to put their place in the group stages of the Europa League. And he insists the players are used to playing big matches in such a short period of time. The, the game at Ibrox has been looming, you know, on the horizon for a few weeks, and um, you know they got a positive result last night as well. So you know both teams are going into the game in, in very good form. It will be high octane, uh, noisy, colourful, uh, competitive, yeah, just difficult to predict. You know, like so there may be goals in it, there may be not. It's very form goes out the window, as you know, but. Um, I just want us to put in a, a strong performance, which I'm, I know the team are capable of. I'd be delighted to keep a clean sheet, you know, and I'd fancy our chances to maybe nick a goal or one or two. We're in powerful form, you know, particularly going forward. I think the defence is looking, you know, players are getting more up to speed with how we play and more familiar with the surroundings. So, you know, we've a lot to be um, looking forward to going into the game. So, yeah, there's a lot of... You know, positive contributions in the goal stakes from from a lot of areas, which again is what the team's capable of. Um, I think we've got nine in the last three games, <clears throat> so you know that is good form. You know, by any standard. You know, looking at the squad in general, you know, apart from maybe Hot Tim, who's still reaching to get 100% fitness, and Tom Rogic, You know, we're in good shape. You know, physically, even though it's been a a monumental month. I think we've played. I don't know, thirteen, some fourteen competitive games already. So it's been a you know a demanding month for the players, but um, you know they've handled it very, very well, and we've got one big, big game to look forward to to go. It's very exciting. I think I know. I mean, the players uh, over the past few years have dealt with pressure situations very, very well. Um, it doesn't become normal because every game's different, but the mentality is good. You know, and the mentality for pressure games and big games has been excellent over the last three, four, five years. So, is it a, a concern? No, I think uh, they're well experienced now for you know what lies ahead. The, every performance gets analysed to death, and um, you know to, to say is it a, a marker or a defining moment in the season? It's just sorry, I'm not buying into that at all. If the bookies think that Rangers are favourite, then good. That suits suits me fine. I I don't know why because our form. It's been fantastic, and we're in goal-scoring form, and we're winning games convincingly. So, um, it's not bad being the underdog with the way we're playing at the moment. Neil Lennon there talking ahead of the game, and um, both sides go into this game in the back of a hundred percent league record. Celtic with 15 goals from their three games. And I'm sure that you, Simon Neil Lennon, would probably prefer to be actually on the pitch as opposed to on the touchline. Yeah, that's. I mean. It's the second best thing to play in, you know, managing the team or coaching the team at the sidelines. But as an ex-player yourself, many a time this fixture, uh, you'd much prefer to be influencing it from the, from the pitch. But that's down to the players today again. Start of a new season, both teams have started the season well. Something has to give today and, and hopefully, unlike the last couple of times we've, we've covered the game here, Celtic didn't turn up. Hopefully today we see the real Celtic and if that's the case, I'm sure we, we go home with three points. I suppose over and above the league form both sides are going into the back 
on, on the back of booking the place in the group stages of the Europa League Celtic with that victory in Stockholm Rangers with a last minute goal against Legia Warsaw to knock them out as well so I suppose both sides have had that a tough 90 minutes but the confidence that comes from qualifying for the next stage of that competition Aye, 100% as I say both uh, both teams have started the season very very well Celtic have scored a lot of goals you know the disappointment of the, the Champions League with Kluge kind of hangs over the, the club at the moment but a fantastic result midweek to get into the, the group stages of the Europa League so and a, and a, an interesting group as well so a lot to look forward to but today it's domestic duty and it's, it's a, a, a real important game for Celtic today. Well when you talk about a, a big game player James Forrest certainly fits that category and he, he just keeps getting better and better with each season Absolutely, uh, fantastic goal during the week again uh, seems to be the big big game player you know he's scored a lot of goals in cup finals for Celtic goals in this fixture uh, fantastic career really decorated in terms of medals as well James so you know he's one that we'll look to today to hope for an effect on this game we are just about seven minutes away from kick-off here at Ibrox the first Glasgow derby of the season just awaiting the arrival of both sides if you're just joining us the Celtic starting 11 this afternoon Fraser Foster and goals El Hamid and right back Near Bitton and Christopher Julian, the central defensive pairing, volleyball and golly at left back. Ahead of them, Scott Brown and Callum McGregor. And we have James Forrest, Ryan Christie, Mikey Johnson in leading the line, Odson Edward for Rangers. It's Alan McGregor and goals, Tavernier, Golson, Katic and Flanagan. Ahead of them, Kamara, Jack and Davis, then Aribo, Arfield, and it's Jermaine Defoe is leading the line for the home side and I suppose it, it, we see it every game it's so important how it was particularly in a, a derby game Simon how, how both teams start and, and you'll get an indication of how the game might go from those first 10-15 minutes yeah definitely and as I say I covered the game with Jerry in December here at Ibrox and Celtic just didn't get going at all you know Rangers came out the blocks uh, very fast and that set the tone for the, for the whole game uh, Lenny will have you know, emphasise that to the boys that the, the start of the game is very important. As I say, Rangers have started the season well, they've got their tails up, and it's important for Celtic to go out and, and you know, show why they've been the champions over the, the last eight years. Uh, it's a, it's, as I say, it's a massive game for both teams, but I don't think uh, Lenny will have left it in any uncertain terms how you have to start this game today. And when you're a player in, in those last few minutes, and obviously when you're here, the majority of the fans are the, the home fans, you can hear that noise as you say you were here when there wasn't a single Celtic fan. What, what, what's going through your mind in those last few minutes in the tunnel before you get out on the pitch? You just want to go there. You just want to go there. I mean, it, it, my first experience of this fix at Ibrox, you know, there was no fans here, but it actually inspired myself and I think the team, you know, we were unlucky that day not to win. And I think, you know, this experience for the, the Celtic players that have been over this fixture before, they're used to looking to the left and it's all green and white. Today it's not the case. We've got 800 in the corner. Uh, hopefully that inspires the boys, you know, they're, they're here to do the job for the club. And hopefully they can take the three points back home. As you say, even if there's only a few hundreds, if, if Celtic are winning the game and playing well, it's the 800 fans you're going to hear, you'll not hear the, the 50,000. 100%, you'll hear them. Uh, I say the last time we covered it, we didn't have the chance to, to sing and shout, so hopefully we do today. Well, as you say, we're just waiting arrival of both sides. Bobby Madden, the referee, this afternoon, and a hearty band of about 800 Celtic fans over in that corner between the, the main stand and the Broomland Road stand. We'll be hoping to cheer some Celtic goals this afternoon. Celtic have three wins under their belt in the league, 5-0 in the opening day against St Johnson, 4-1 against Motherwell at Fir Park, and they followed it up last weekend with a 3-1 win over Hearts. Rangers started with a 2-1 win against Kamalik at Ibrox, 6-1 win here against Hibs, and then 1-0 last week end against St Mirren. So certainly plenty of goals in, in those fixtures for both sides. And I think when you we come into this game, you're always surprised if, if there's not goals in it. Yeah, I think... Uh, as you say, both sides have scored plenty of goals at the start of this season. Celtic have looked attacking-wise very, very potent. I mean, four goals away from home in Europe during the week. Uh, as I say, the only thing, the only kind of cloud that's sat over the start of the season is the, the Champions League qualification. Everything else, the boys have ticked every box. Uh, so yeah, I expect goals today from midfield to front are very creative, uh, very strong. Edward hopefully has shrugged off the, the little knocker that a cramp they had midweek. Uh, he'll be a, an important player again today for us. 
on the Celtic bench this afternoon. Craig Gordon is the substitute goalkeeper, and then we have Lee Griffiths, Bio Moritz Barr, who just joined us the other day from Stoke City. He is on the bench today. Johnny Hayes, Lewis Morgan has scored his first goal for Celtic midweek, and Olivier in Cham. So certainly some attacking options for New Lennon should he require them in the course of the game. Yeah, definitely. I'm glad to see the big guy Bio having an effect against Hearts last weekend. You know that'll give his confidence a boost, you know he's going to leave it stop-start uh, his Celtic career. And as long as you've got a guy like Lee Griffiths on the bench as well, you know, maybe not at peak fitness yet, but, you know, final third, he's a real threat. So there's, there's stuff there that they can use if they need it, you know. But hopefully that's not the case, you know, hopefully we start in 11. Midfield to front go and create a lot of chances and we get the goals we need. Well, Ryan Christie, of course, is already on eight goals for this season, so he would clearly like to get closer to double figures this afternoon and Neil Lennon will just be looking for his side to maintain this 100% start to the league campaign the first Glasgow derby of the season and here come both sides Celtic led as always by Scott Brown James Cavanier wearing the captain's armband for the home side Fraser Foster he came back to the club last week played against Hearts and was unlucky not to save the penalty that Hearts got his experience, of course, he's, he's, he's a new signing in terms of this season, but a veteran of this fixture. Yeah, and just as I said at the, at the beginning, we always forget, you know, that he's, he's been over this course before. Him and Beaton, important members of the defensive unit today to help the other guys, you know, get through this. It's a totally new experience for Julian Bolingoli and El Hamed. So you're looking for those two as the experience in the, in the back five, if you like. Celtic players will just make their way over to our left hand side and go and acknowledge the Celtic fans who are here this afternoon the important game Scott Brown certainly a veteran of these games and as much as Neil Lennon's words in the dressing room will be important Scott Brown's last few words of encouragement in the huddle will also be a, a key to how the team start it definitely will be you know Brown is a complete leader skipper of the the side uh, will be vitally important today, but yeah, some important last words. Just to re-emphasise probably what Lenny said in the dressing room and make sure we start the game in the, in the correct manner. Well, we are just moments away from the first Glasgow derby of the season. Last season, it was honours to the home side and all four of the fixtures. Can Celtic change that this afternoon here at Ibrox as Scott Brown just ushers his players into the pre-match huddle? Important last few moments, Christopher Julien making his bow in this fixture, scored his first goal for Celtic midweek. And took it off the toe, Scott Brown actually, but they all count in the end, and I'm sure as a striker you'd have been claiming that one as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And as I say, I covered the Dunfermline game and a couple of little moments in that game, but these guys are, are new to the club, they're, they're still bedding in, uh, and this is another big step, you know, for, for these guys. They've not have experienced an atmosphere like this before. Uh, but yeah, the gold midweek just gives him a little, little boost. And hopefully today the back four are really solid. And it will be Odson Edward, I think, to get the game underway here. Celtic shooting from left to right. Odson Edward knocks that one. Well, it's unorthodox. We saw Hearts doing that last week. And it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's an unusual kickoff. Yeah, it's almost like a rugby kickoff. Yeah. yeah. Is that just to try and pin the, the Rangers just back? To, yeah, just to take the play into Rangers' back, back third here uh, and try and apply pressure straight away. Unusual, I've never seen that before. Did Hearts do that last week? They did, yeah, and that was absolutely slating them. But here comes Mikey Johnson. Oh, it's an Edward into the box. It's Johnson, twists, he turns. The ball rolled out towards James Forrest. Forrest clips it into the area. Celtic on the attack early on. Tavernier heads it clear. Knocked out to the edge of the area. The ball hooked up towards the halfway line, Scott Brown gets in ahead of the phone, just nudges it across the near Beton. Well, he's another player with plenty of experience and need that calmness this afternoon, Bolly Bolongoli slides it down the line to Callum McGregor, drives forward, he's got Mikey Johnson inside again, he's got plenty of the ball early stages, the ball flicked back inside, knocked towards the area and cleared by Katic only as far as Bolongoli, so these first few seconds, it's Celtic certainly on the front foot, trying to maybe set down a marker, Stephen Gerrard stands on the edge of his technical area, Neil Lennon just in the dugout at the moment, Christopher Julian on the ball, rolls it across now to Hatem El Hamid good to see him back in the side this afternoon he gets beyond his man, he's been held back certainly a foul there and yeah, Kamara just 
tugging the jersey there of the Celtic player and you can see Scott Brown just encouraging the team and it's, it's been a very promising start albeit it's only the first 90 seconds yeah well I think just from the centre you know unorthodox but it gets the, the play in Rangers half and Celtic have most of the possession up until now so yeah it's a positive start Christie moves into the middle of the park takes a shot and it's not too far away well he's got a good dig on him applause from his manager and very encouraging start I think McGregor knew it was going over but uh, good to see Ryan Christie having another goal from outside the area yeah and, and how many times has he done that this season already you know from round about the, the edge of the box he's got a fantastic strike on him that one just a little bit too high the ball knocked forward with McGregor it finds Flanagan just on the halfway line Forrest races over to close down the left back the ball knocked into the middle of the park Davis moves over the halfway line through the centre circle Tavernier an option wide on the right immediately Bolingoli goes pulls him down knocks it out of play and I suppose that's when Neil Lennon will be looking for Bolingoli as soon as Tavernier gets the ball we'll be right on top of him because he is dangerous going forward yeah I think that's you know that's his strength going forward Tavernier uh, so as a left back we're playing against him you want to maybe try, try and dictate to him you know and, and take him the other way the ball in the centre circle rolled across Kamara back to Katic Christie goes to close him down then just forced to play all the way back to the goalkeeper on the edge of the area. Goldson's an op option. Takes the touch. Eventually just knocks that one long and out of play. He was looking for Tavernier down that right flank. Arfield was there on support as well, but it's going out for a throw in. The open exchanges. Celtic certainly have settled into the game. You could see Scott Brown just having words with his team. Atam El Hamid switches that one back to Julian again. 25 yards from his own goal. Knocks it out wide to the Israeli. Takes a touch. He clips it down the line. He was looking for Forrest, but it's under hit and it's intercepted by Flanagan. Davis still in his own half and knocks it across again, looking for his captain. Always an option, Tavernier. Michael Johnson tries to block his route forward, flights it across, looking for a rebound, but edged out and it's out for a throw in on this near side. I can't even begin to imagine what the tension is like on the picture as it is at that one. Just the your game day and your game head kicks in because yeah. I'm, I'm my nerves are jangling. Yeah, me too because I'm just I'm watching it like yourself, Paul. But yeah, once you get out there and get the first couple of good touches, you hopefully settle into the game. I think it's a really good position we're in here with Edward playing up front. The last couple of games, Michael Johnson's been relied on up front in these games. It's, really been harsh on the, on the kid, you know, he's playing more in his favoured position today and hopefully we see the best of him linking up with Edward. And he's had a fine start to the season, Mike has, Johnson, yeah, I, I think has. he's kind of stepped up. Yeah, as I say, a, a fantastic talent, you know, and just unfortunate last year that maybe situations there we had to play him up front on his own. Uh, and I find it tough. The ball out of play for a throw just a yard or so of the halfway line down the right-hand side for Rangers. Tavernier will take this one, just to try that crossfield pass, Michael Johnson challenges, good play there from the Celtic youngster, looking for the throw-in Rangers have a throw-in in the exact same position, it's inside now to Ryan Jack, Jack shrugs off Johnson and Ryan Christie challenges, the ball over to the left-hand side good play there from Hatem El Hamid and eventually Katic knocks it down the line for a reboot gets the ball back on that left-hand side Shrugged off the ball from El Hamid again. Good play. Fraser Foster will get his first touch. Scoops it high in the air, up towards the halfway line. Katic again is the man that wins the header. Beaton happy to shepherd that one out of play. Neil Lennon just applauding his team there. It's so important to win the, the physical battles before you, you, you win, win the football game. Yeah, and I'm just looking at the you know, back four. There's some big units there. El Hamid, Julian, big boys. You know, so it's it's made for them to you know compete physically Scott Brown knocks that one back outside it's a good one too with ball and goal he's down that left hand side gives it back to Johnson and inside left channel it's twists he turns still Mikey Johnson drives into the box it's still Johnson plays it low and it's blocked at the expense of a corner that's wonderful wing play from Mikey Johnson great play and we just touched on it there Paul back in his preferred position you know working in on that right side in the, from the left on his right foot twist and turn so difficult to defend, you know, particularly when he gets in the box you know, one false move and it's, it's a penalty kick but positive play for Johnson there 
the result, this first corner of the afternoon. It's going to be an outswinger from Ryan Christie. Delivers that one to the far side, looking for Julian, but it's headed out by Golson. Knocked away by Kamara. McGregor nudges it back to Christie. Christie just takes a touch, delivers it into the box again. This time it's Golson who heads it out in this near side. Beaton will get there ahead of Aribo. Good play, clever play there from Beaton. Ball and Dolly takes up the play. That's all the way back to Fraser Foster. That was good play there from near Beaton. Yeah, I, I, I can influence Beaton. You know, it's obviously he's not a recognised centre back, but he certainly can control the play. He's very composed on the ball. Here comes Christie. Christie shrugging off Davis. And eventually, the Irishman just manages to get the Irishman. Eventually, the Irishman just manages to dispossess Celtic player, but good play there from Bolingoli right on top of our field. Well, certainly it's been very encouraging in these first seven minutes the way Celtic have, have not really let Rangers get on the ball at all. No, and it's, it's evident, you know, we're, we're really hungry to win the ball back when we lose it. You know, a lot has to to Look to Bolingoli, challenges for that one. Scott Brown nudges it forward, he's looking for Johnson, Connor Golson, goes up. All the way back to his goalkeeper, he just nudges it across the Katic. And he's just forced to play that up towards the halfway line. Brown takes a touch, but it's Arfield. And the ball played on, McGregor may get retrospective action there, but it's Rangers into the area with Defoe. Takes a touch, it almost runs out of play. Ryan Jack, Jack nudges it across to Kamara, plays it on towards Arfield. Beaton read it well, plays it up to the halfway line. Alton Edwards shows good strength. Tries to nudge that one through towards Forrest. And it's all the way back to the Rangers goalkeeper. So the first time Rangers have really ventured forward there. And the referee waving the advantage maybe to, to Callum McGregor's favour there. Yeah, I think he might pull Callum back for that one. A bit late with it just after a miscontrol from... Here comes Defoe. Gets the 1-2 with the Rebo. And a wonderful challenge there from El Hamid. As the four come in there, as Bobby Madden will have a word with Callum McGregor. And it's going to be a Rangers corner. And yeah, I think that's fair enough. It was, a, it was a late tackle from Callum, just as I say, miscontrol for Brown. And the rest more or less saying that's, that's your last one, you know, before he shows him a yellow card, so fair enough. Yeah, I think uh, we're happy with that decision. I'm not sure if the fans behind us were quite no, as, uh, no, as no, an agreement. They clearly aren't. But, uh, <laughs> Rangers with the first corner, it's the first set piece that Celtic will have to defend, Davis delivers that one into the six yard box and it's headed over well, at the near side looked as if it might have been Katic, as if it might have been Katic it got in the end of that one, but thankfully it's gone behind for a goal kick and we are almost at the ten minute mark, still goal is here at Ibrox and the game play at such a, a fast and frantic pace and it's one of those games, particularly domestically, where you don't always see it both sides are going for it yeah, yeah, it's, it's 100 miles an hour stuff and it's easy to get caught up in it as well, you know. You need to try and keep a calm head, which is not easy in this fixture, but important, you know, if you want to go and try and get the victory. Well, Katic is winning a lot in there, but just headed it straight back to Fraser Foster. Celtic take up the play with Christopher Julian. Ball and goal, he's wide on the left-hand side, switches it across to the Belgian. Brings that one down as Ryan Jack goes to close him down. And back now with Neil Beton. He's started well. And again, El Hamid offers himself just at the halfway line. Once more back to Christopher Julian. He's got the option of playing it all the way back to his goalkeeper. Edge of the six yard box. He just fires that one long over the top. Goes and managed to get ahead on that one, which is just as well because if it missed him, Mikey Johnson was through there. Tavernier knocks that one long, neither side giving the other an inch, he's near Beton again, back to Fraser Foster, cool play from the Israeli, and once more Fraser Foster takes up the play, first goal in these fixtures is so important, there's no Lennon just ushering inside up towards the halfway line, Fraser Foster will bring this one out, Only really call on the fourth official, both managers just in their technical area, as again the ball's knocked long, looking for Forrest flying and Happily shepherd that one out of play, it'll be a, a tough afternoon for John Flanagan, he'll know that up against Forrest, because just in the, the blink of an eye, Forrest can just produce something out of nothing. Yeah, we just need to try to get James O'Ball in this final, you know, control possession and, and get at Flanagan. Paul Hamid knocks it inside McGregor, back to Julian, and he just knocks it long, 
has stayed in play. Katic will get there. He rolls it back to his goalkeeper. And it's knocked over on the right hand side. Ball and Dolly challenges, does well against Tavernier. The ball breaks into the middle of the park. Scott Brown couldn't quite a touch on it. And Kamara back now with Flanagan. And it's into the middle of the park. Davis again, another veteran of these fixtures. As Katic moves forward. Flanagan all the way back to his goalkeeper. Once more, it's floated over to the right hand side, looking for Tavernier. This time, he's got time to bring that down. Plays it forward, looking for our field. It's Rangers. There's Kamara, now to Jack. And it's switched across to the left hand side. Celtic funneling back into position. And Kamara just runs into too many green and white hook shots. It's the ball knocked long there by Ryan Christie, looking for another Mikey Johnson, but he'd move back and we've seen it quite a few times this season, Ryan Christie's crossfield pass just looking for that run into the channel and it's worked really well. Yeah and there's, there's a bit of space there you know behind the, the Rangers back four if it's a better ball, uh, I think Edward had actually came short there, it was just a, a misunderstanding between the two players Arfield tries to flip that one on towards Haribo he couldn't get a touch on it and instead it's back again with Fraser Foster again played at such a, a fast and frantic pace Foster, well, he was so unlucky with that penalty last week against Hearts, he would have clearly liked a clean sheet to start his second spell with the club, because he knocks up one long, Mikey Johnson challenges for that one, and it's going to be difficult against Tavernier, the ball played long, Beton should get there, again plays it down the line, Johnson gets in ahead of Tavernier and only succeeds in knocking it out of play. Well, no Lennon can be pleased in his first 13 minutes or so with how, how the team have, have approached this game and as you touched on in, in previous games, maybe not, didn't start in the same manner. Yeah, it, I mean, this Celtic start for me is a total contrast in the last test that uh, Celtic have been at Ibrox. You know, they're, they're up for the fight here, first and foremost. And apart from one little scare there, you know, we've, we've started the game OK. Well played from Beaton again, and the ball breaks to Tavernier down that right hand side. Rangers forced to play it back again into their own half. Jack switches it across to Katic, he's immediately under pressure from James Forrest, but manages to hook it forward. El Hamid, well, a clash there in the head, and it's got to be, well, I think, a clash with Flanagan. I think he had to go for that one, and it was a brave challenge, and I, I don't think, and first look, we see uh, Bowers immediately going out to, to yeah. warm up there and to hopefully yeah. there's nothing on that, but he certainly was fully committed. He certainly was, and I think he's just head up the back of Flanagan's down below us here, rubbing the back of his head, you know, I think El Hamed's taking it full on there in the, in the, in the brow. Well, he's, he's started he's well. As, yeah, yeah, he has, and as I say, a, a big, imposing physical lad, you know, he's went into that 100% and just Unfortunately, caught the back of Flanagan's head. I think he's up and hopefully he's okay. Well, he's just on his knees at the moment. And uh, Moritz Bauer, signed from Stoke City in a season long loan, he's just warming up in front of us in the main stand here. So it could be a certainly a, an early introduction to him if, if El Hamid couldn't continue, and that would be some introduction to a Celtic career. Yeah, yeah. A couple of days in, in the door at the club and dipped into this fixture, but I, th I think El Hamed's actually look as if he's, he's going to carry on here, I think just the immediate impact has knocked him a little bit there, but he's, he's on his feet now and looks as if he's recovered. Yeah, well, I think he's just gone over to the sidelines, but I think he will be able to continue, and he has started well, he's already looked very impressive in the early stages of his Celtic career, Scott Brown, back to Callum McGregor, knocked over to the left-hand side to Bolingoli, Switches it on to Johnson, edge of the box. Still Johnson, flicks it back to Bollingoli, he scoops it into the area, looking for Odson Edward, it's not clear. Ryan Christie on the edge of the centre circle couldn't get control of that one. It's Kamara, up against Brown. Celtic, with the ball back now with El Hamid. Drives towards the edge of the area, he's into the box, tries to knock it into towards Odson Edward, but it's cleared. Scott Brown challenges Kamara. Gets a touch on it, and again, Scott Brown. This time, he is penalised for the foul. A good battling play from the Celtic captain. Yeah, he won the ball back a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds before that. Rangers fans were looking for a foul there. I actually think he got a touch on the ball that time as well. 
But yeah, that's epitomised the start by Celtic. Really hungry to get the ball back as soon as possible, led by their captain. I suppose that lets the, the midfielders know that they're not going to get a second on the ball. Exactly, exactly. And, th and that's what has been missing from the, the last two times here. Uh, totally opposite for the first 16 minutes here. I thought he was a bit unfortunate in the second one there. I thought he got enough on the ball. Celtic with the throw-in, about 30 yards from their own goal line, down the left-hand side, Bolly Bollingoli. Runs it inside to Mikey Johnson, knocks it forward, picked up by Christie. Dodges it back to the Belgian, he plays it through to Johnson, Johnson drives forward. He's struggled off the ball this time by Steve Davis, but good play there from Ryan Christie. And again, Celtic closing down every ball, and Katic's playing it back to McGregor, chased down by Ryan Christie. Beat on, watches that one, does well. It's frantic in the middle of the park, isn't it? It's really the pace. Rangers with the throw-in, down the right-hand side. Midway inside the Celtic half, Tavernier, not too many options, has to give it to Ryan Jack, gets the return. He switches it all the way back into his own half and it's knocked into the middle of the park. Katic takes up the plate, Flanagan's an option just on the halfway line. He nudges it forward, Kamara moves that on towards the fort. And the ball out of plate, and it's out for a throw-in to Celtic. Good play again, well... We have to look at Scott Brown, he is up for this fight today, Simon. Certainly is. Celtic are. Celtic are, it's a... It's a good start to the game. Well, Scott Brown leading by example, he's the ball's knocked long, looking for Odson Edward. Picked up by Kamara again. El Hamid knocks it through to Forrest. Ryan Christie obstructed there. Play picked up by Flanagan, there's not too many options and he has to switch that one across and I think if he can cut out the service to Tavernier it really closes down an attacking option for Rangers. Yeah, that's that's a threat, you know, as I said earlier on, that's one of his strengths going forward. Beaton picks up the play, a few half-hearted plays for a penalty there as Arfield fell down but nothing given. Christie heads that one on, trying to find Odson Edward. Johnson does well to block Tavernier. So far, so good. Almost 19 minutes on the clock. Still goal is here, but Celtic certainly are playing well. Still to see the first real clear cut chance for either side. But Celtic have plenty of goal scorers on their team. And the ball knocked out of play. This will be a throw in to Celtic. Mm. Yeah, we're just touching on that. You know, really frantic in the middle of the park. You're looking for a cool head, you know, a bit of composure. For a McGregor and a Christie, you know, a, bit, a piece of magic that will hopefully open things up for Celtic. El Hamid. Back to Christopher Julian. And I think his option will be to play it. In fact, a cross now to his central defensive partner. Beaton. Moves it into the middle of the park to Callum McGregor. Back to the Israeli again. Out wide to Bollingoli. Switches it inside to McGregor. This is good play from Celtic on the halfway line. And McGregor runs a throw in. Arrivo and Arfield trying to close him down. I think that's what Beaton gives you at the back, is that, that calmness of a midfielder. Yeah, I think people have questioned his you know, defending abilities at times before, but he certainly is an assured football player with the ball at his feet. You know, composure can take it in any area of the pitch. And I think that's why Lenny goes with him in there just now. You know, it's, it's a bit of building from the back. He can read the game, intelligent football player. McGregor knocks that one long, high, and it's going out of play. In fact, it's still on the line. Golson knocks it back into the Celtic half. Julian gets there ahead of Aribo. The Frenchman. He's got El Hamid on the right hand side. Finds the Israeli again. Moves over the half the line. Forrest is ahead of him. Tries to dance past Kamara, but it's a throw in just in front of the Rangers technical area. But still, Celtic have the ball. 20 minutes gone. Still awaiting the first goal here at Ibrox. Christie's down the line. Flanagan knocks that one through. Almost sets up Christie. Davis had to read that well. And it came to his teammate's rescue. And Flanagan switches that across. He's looking for the willing run of our field. But Ball and Golly will get there ahead of him. He plays it back to near Beton. Ball and Golly starts to make the forward run. Mikey Johnson leaves it for the Belgian. Tries to cut it inside, and the ball played down the line. McGregor gets a touch on it. 
Good play again for Celtic. Christie in the middle of the park. Two men round him, but rolls it across. Celtic on the attack now. Down the inside late channel. Forrest out wide. Up against Flanagan. First chance to run at the left back. Forrest goes for Christie. Just misses him. Well, he, but he just turned his body across to make that wee half yard of shape. Yeah, I think he was looking for a little one-two with Christie there. Just again, a wee bit of misunderstanding between the two. Ball and goal, he keeps that one in play. That's, uh, Celtic. Well, I think you can see now in defences when James Forrest gets the ball, there's that apprehension because they don't quite know what he's going to do. Yeah, and if I'm El Hamed, I'm just continuously feeding him. That's a good ball on Edward. Christie dummies it. Back to Edward. Edward, edge of the box, a chance. Tries to turn onto his favoured right foot. Still battling for that one. The ball knocked out to this near side. Forrest couldn't quite keep it in play, but Celtic have the throw in. Taken quickly. Christie and Edward combining well there. Forrest drives it back to the Celtic captain, switches it across now to Callum McGregor. Every outfield player in the Rangers half at the moment. Here comes Beaton again. Johnson spins inside, gives it to Christie. Christie tries to knock it across towards McGregor, but it's picked up by Davis back again to Callum McGregor. Beaton wins that header, knocks it out in the far side and this is good play for Celtic. Good play there, I just think Edward maybe will take a take a just gonna have a shot on your left foot there. He tried to cut back in, back into traffic on his right foot. But it opened up nicely for him if he just you know backed himself with his left foot. McGregor nudges it across to Goldson. Much to the consternation of the home fans, but he managed to play that one beyond Callum McGregor. Rangers been pinned back at the moment. Celtic pressing the ball high up the park. Ball and Golly wins the header, knocks it inside towards his captain. Who wins that ball against Aribo? Well, the home fans will not be happy with that because that was a ball that Aribo should have won. Scott Brown turns inside, plays it across to beat on, locked on to Ball and Golly. Good play from Ball and Golly. Now to McGregor down the left hand side. Johnson's out wide. Johnson up against Tavernier, gets a touch, but it's a throw in to Celtic. Oh, Scott Brown is absolutely relishing this game so far. Yeah, and I don't think Aribo was relishing that 50 50 there. It was probably a 60 40 for Aribo. But he had a look at Bruni there and thought I'm taking second prize. So with the throw in, 30 yards or so from the Rangers goal line, down the left hand side. Ball and Golly's there. Christie's just ahead of him. Johnson comes short, gives it back to the Belgian. McGregor. Back to Ball and Golly. Has to roll it towards Peter, but it's a slack pass. It's picked up by. Jermaine Defoe, and the ball knocked out to the left-hand side, Flanagan, edge of the box, Rangers on the attack now, Flanagan leaves it for Defoe, plays it back towards Kamara, the ball played towards the area, nobody can put their foot on it, but Defoe now rolls it out wide, but Tavernier come inside, well, Celtic almost the offers of their own misfortune there. Yeah, just a slack pass from Ball and Golly there, I don't think he, he obviously seen Defoe lurking if you're on. Just pit that last bit of play epitomised the game, you know, 100 miles an hour. Man take, as I said before. I'm just calling out for somebody to show a bit of class, a bit of composure. Ball and Golly on the ball, the throw in, gives it towards Christie. The Rangers pick up the ball now with Davis. Davis forced to switch it across to Flanagan, the left back. He rolls it forward towards Aribo. Back again to Flanagan. Aribo under pressure from El Hamid. Forrest. Back to the Israeli. He loses out against the Rebo. Kamara flicks it through to Arfield, 20 yards from goal. Goes it out wide, a Rebo. Edge of the area. Two men round him. Goes down. And it's cleared right footed by Callum McGregor up towards the Celtic technical area. Neil Lennon just shouting instructions there. Yeah, I think he's telling El Hamid to just pick the pace up a wee bit when he's on the ball there. He's allowed to be caught in possession, just a little bit slow with his decision making and get caught on it. The ball thrown inside towards Aribo, cushions it towards Kamara, back into the middle of the park, Jack, he's got the option of his captain out wide, Mikey Johnson intercepts, drives forward, Jack had to slide in to make amends for his slack pass, so he had the throw in to play from Mikey Johnson. He's got to be alert because we know what he can do in attacking sense, but he is going to have to help down that left flank and the Rangers have the ball. Yeah, absolutely, you know, you're not going to have the luxury of just all out attack here, you've got a job to do, and you've not got the ball. 
Dawson wins the header there, knocks it into the middle of the park. Kamara's the first to react. It's knocked on. Julian, good strong header there from the Frenchman. And once more, Mikey Johnson picks up the play. Bolongoli gets beyond his man. Good play there, following up for the Belgian on the attack. And Celtic have a throw in. Apart from that one slack pass, he's had a, a good start to the game, Bolongoli. Yeah, he has. And, you know, I've seen him on the, the first day of the season. I thought it was very good. Uh, he's taken a little bit of stick, you know, since then. But it's the same as the centre back, Julian. It's a new club, new environment. You know, it's going to take him time. He's not going to come in and automatically. Christie goes down under the challenge of Kamara and a lunge, and it's given Celtic an opportunity about 26 yards out to test Alan McGregor. It's a pity he can't just bring can Lee Griffiths on for that. Out, <laughs> can, we bring, can we bring Lee off the bench? Saying that Odds and scored a fantastic goal at Celtic Park the other week in the free kick. We've got Odds and Edward, Ryan Christie, and the Betons made his way up. Yeah, I'm not sure if he'll get on free kick duties, just over 27 minutes gone. So it could be the right foot of Odds and Edward, it could be the left foot of Ryan Christie. Alan McGregor just stands at his right hand post, lining up his wall. So Celtic with a set piece opportunity to game, get it on target and just follow up for the rebound. Can Neil Lennon's side open the scoring here with a set piece? Odson Edward, Ryan Christie. The whistle goes. The Frenchman steps forward. Fires that one. Wide on the right hand post behind for a goal kick. Yeah, I'd be disappointed he didn't get yeah, that on the target. He managed to get it up and over the wall and at a good height, but just pulled it, you know, wide of, of the near post there. So a sigh of relief to the home side and we have a goal kick and we still await the first goal here this afternoon. We're almost at the half hour mark. No Lennon just check the instructions again. As Flanagan brings that one down. Kamara turns inside. Davis in the edge of the centre circle and still Rangers in their own half. And once more switch it out wide to Tavernier. He fires it forward towards Defoe. He cushioned that one looking for Arfield but Colin Golly read it well clears his lanes but it comes straight back from Jack again, picks up the ball he's forced to play it inside to Kamara, Flanagan's drifted over to the left hand side, he's in plenty of space, the left back but the ball over on the right hand side at the moment, Neil Lennon almost gesturing towards Flanagan, Forrest sprints across Eribo under pressure there from El Hamid forced to play that one back, good sliding challenge there, Kamara gets in ahead of Christie, both sides battling for the ball but it breaks now to Kamara Play to Davis, Davis evades the challenge, rolls it towards the four, a chance for Rangers, straight at Vesa Foster, strong hands from the Celtic goalkeeper. Yeah, first little bit of play for Rangers, you know, it creates a threat there to four, we don't want him getting the ball in and around the box, you know, with time to shift it, he's usually lethal in there, so glad to see that one straight down Foster's throat and dealt with. Bolongoli trying to feed that one inside to Callum McGregor, and it's Rangers pick up the ball with Davis through towards our field. Beat on the challenge strongly out on the fort. And here comes Celtic now with McGregor up towards the halfway line. Has to check his run. Still McGregor. Good strength there. Gives it to Bolongoli. He nudges it out wide to Johnson, straight back to the Belgian. Flicks it through, and Johnson goes down, and he wins the foul. We've seen Flanagan with a bit of space down the left-hand side. Is that because the Rangers are playing quite narrow ahead, so James Forrest is having to move inside to cover? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, likewise on Celtics far side, you know, Ball and Gauze get some reasonable space as well there. But James, James has had to do some defensive work, you know, more than we'd like at the moment. I'd like to see him get on the ball a wee bit more. They say every, every time it comes in front of us here, El Hamid should just be feeding him the ball, giving him it as much as he possibly can. Well, Celtic have a free kick that Ryan Christie is going to deliver into the box. Julian and Beaton have moved, both moved up to the edge of the area. Christie floats it into the box and Colson does well to clear it and it's knocked up towards the halfway line. Ball and Dolly's there ahead of the fort. And safely ushers that one back to his goalkeeper again before he decides not to try and close down the play and Celtic with their central defenders will move back into position. Foster knocks that one long, looking for Odson Edward up against Golson, manages to head that one on but Tavernier is the first to react. Good strength there from Odson Edward. It's a tough physical battle, but he's just looking, I suppose, for somebody to, to latch on to that if he gets it. Yeah, just things like that, you know, Mikey Johnson just take a little gamble on Odson winning it. 
Kamara, who's almost on the left back row, has to knock it back to his goalkeeper, who plays it across to Conor Golson. He starts to move forward up through the half. Christie goes to close him down, he plays it forward, only succeeds in finding Mikey Johnson, who drives forward again, Johnson threads it through towards Orton Edward, he's stayed onside, a chance for the Frenchman, he's put it into the go. back of the net, there and Celtic, with 31 Later. minutes on the clock, have a goal! Orton Edward has scored for the champions! Fantastic play, you know, win the ball back, a slack pass on the right for Rangers, Mikey Johnson driving in, threads the pass through, kill as you like from Edward. Well, Mikey Johnson, he still had a lot to do. Otton Edwards stayed onside. Well, when he went in the box, you're just thinking this is in the back of the night. He's so cool. He's another big game player and yeah. he's given Celtic a big yeah. game goal. I, I seen him bearing down on McGregor and I thought, is he taking it too close to him? But, as I said, cool as you like. Underneath McGregor, 1-0 Celtic. First blood goes to the champions. Neil Lennon delighted the Celtic players. Well, they have certainly started this game well and they have got the rewards. Mikey Johnson has been very impressive on the left-hand side. He got that ball, a poor pass from Goldson. He surged forward, he slotted it into the channel and there was Odson Edwards, cool as you like, and rolled it under Callum McGregor, uh, and Callum McGregor. Alan McGregor, 32 minutes on the clock now and Celtic lead here at Ibrox by a goal to nil. Important now, I suppose we always see it after a team has scored the goal just to, to stay tight at the back as the, as the opposition tried to get back into the yeah, game. we're on the 30, 32 minute mark uh, don't give them any encouragement you know and, and go and try and pick off the next goal Rangers with the throw in Aribo gets beyond Scott Brown knocks it through towards the goal and he's offside and the flag goes up over on the far side and Celtic have the ball John Kennedy and Neil Lennon just in the technical area there Kennedy just shouting some instructions to the back four Scott Brown a calm and presence in the heart of the Celtic midfield he knows how important it is that having taken the lead Celtic maintain that we have just under 12 minutes of the first half remaining and so far so good for Neil Lennon's side they have scored the 13th league goal of the season Tisty picks up the ball this time Odson Edward is penalised for the challenge and Conor Golson will not want to see that goal again. It was his slack pass that set the ball up for Mikey Johnson. And Odson Edward, well, he knows what it's like to score here. Everybody remembers that famous goal in the 10 men 3 2 game. And he scored another important game this afternoon as Julian challenges it breaks to Arfield. He knocks it across and El Hamid will get there first, fires it up to the left hand side it's a good ball it's an Edward the sliding challenge ball and goalie goes in oh. with Brian Jack well it certainly looked as if Brian Jack was a bit late with that challenge the Celtic players are not happy with that and ball and goalie will require treatment and if it's a free kick it should be a yellow card yeah yeah initial opinion on that he's went in you know slightly late with the studs up Celtic, ball and golly, not sure if he will require treatment, but he certainly went for that one, Ryan Jack, late with that, you know, lucky to escape a yellow card, Celtic with 10 minutes of the first half remaining, leading by a goal to nil. Uh, I think he is going to require treatment now. I suppose he just takes the sting out of the game after a few minutes after scoring yeah, as well. He's, he's not moved, you know, but hopefully it's not too serious, but a great challenge for Jack, and as you say, if it's a free kick, that, that merits a, a yellow card. So the Celtic fans, in fine voice, there's only 800 of them, but we said before the game, if, if Celtic are playing well and winning, then there's only one set of fans you're going to hear. Yeah, I'm singing Edward song over there, so it's, it's good to hear. Uh, and hopefully we keep you know, the majority of the crowd quiet for the rest of this game. And we said right at the start it was so important, you could see from the first five, ten minutes how the game might go from the way we started and right from the word goal Celtic were really at it. Yeah, uh, apart from the little bit of quality there for the goal, you know, there's not been much more round about the goal, but what I will say is, you know, the hunger and the work of Celtic right from the start, you know, the, we spoke about the centre, putting it into their back third and trying to keep them in there, and it's more or less for the 35 minutes been 
in Rangers half, you know, they've, they've broke a couple of times. But the, the desire and the, the work ethic is there for Celtic today, and I think that's just been emphasised by Lennon, you know, with the, uh, the last two games here. You know, Lenny's obviously said to the guys, you know, we need to stand up and be counted. Uh, Bolly Bolongoli just trying to run off that knock. Celtic. I actually don't think the referee gave a foul there. I think he gave a, a throw in. <laughs> yeah, he has. Which is uh, remarkable. So <laughs> Celtic back to the full compliment. Bolly Bolongoli takes up his place as the ball's knocked long. Looking for Odson Edward that's headed back. And Katic has to get there ahead of Edward. And we, we talk about how James Forrest terrorises defences. Odson Edward does that oh, as well. He's, he's a handful. You know, and he's, he's a physical presence as well. Again, tricky feet in the box. But, you know, he's got that other side to his game with the strength and power as well. Pace. And a sign of his quality and his contribution. He's been called up to the French under 21 squad for the first time. I'm sure he'll make a mark there as well. But this afternoon, he is the man who has made the mark here at Ibrox with 37 minutes on the clock. It's Celtic who lead by that Odson Edward goal. He's on the ball again, spins inside, looking for the foul, nothing given. And it's gone behind for a goal kick. I'm sure the whole side will be desperate to try and get back on level terms. Celtic have been pretty solid at the back so far. Uh, Jermaine Depot shot, I think, from the edge of the box is probably their, their best chance so far. Yeah, they just had a, a, a little chance before El Hamed made a good recovery tackle, but out with that, you know, there's not been much at all. And as I say, Celtic just, they're in the 38th minute, make sure we don't give them any encouragement to half time and hopefully pick them off again. The ball headed clear by El Hamed. Scott Brown challenges there with Aribo. Christie, first to react. Beton heads, hits it off, Aribo. And it's gone behind for a goal kick. Well, both sides really going in for every challenge. And Celtic get the break of the ball. They have a goal kick. Neil Lennon, edge of his technical area, he can be very pleased with the way they say they perform so far. And most importantly, the fact that they have the edge in this game. They have the lead. It's no more than their play deserve. It's always frantic chances are a few and far between when you have players of quality you know they only need one chance yeah and you know it's a slight pass from i think it was goldson and mikey johnson's you know latched on to it, a fantastic pass through and a great finish the four challenges of el hamid there it looked like a foul but nothing given and again Hudson edward wins that header manages to knock it back to his goalkeeper tavernier three men round him Manages just, just to get beyond Bolingoli, plays it forward towards the midfield. Ryan Jack, McGregor, challenges there. Ryan Christie, well, Celtic Hall. They're competing the way that the manager would have wanted them to. Yeah, definitely middle of the park, you know, hungry to win the ball back. It's impressive to watch. Yeah, it's certainly what the Celtic fans would have wanted and they can be pleased with what they've seen so far. With Goldson. I'm not sure if he'll want an assist for that goal. I think we'll give it to Mikey Johnson. Katic on the ball. Forward now to Kamara. Out wide. Flanagan just in front of his manager. Arfield. Manages to play it back to Arf Flanagan. Forward now towards the four. He steers it inside towards Kamara. But Rangers forced to play it back into the middle of the park. Ryan Jack. Still in his own half. Cabernet has made the forward run again. But there's not too many options for Jack. There you go. Into the inside right channel again, Jack out wide this time towards Tavernier. Mikey Johnson challenges, good play from Johnson again. Here comes Aribo, back now to Arfield, Christopher Julian wins that one. Kamara heads it towards the edge of the area, but Bolingoli is the first to react. The ball bobbing about in there, and eventually Christopher Julian flips it on. It's played out wide to Flanagan again. Ryan Christie. I yeah, didn't really see too much in that one. But, uh, I think Christy penalised for just for knocking Kamara off balance, and here come Rangers with Brian Jack again. Davis is the option in the centre of the park. Flanagan's made that run down the left hand side. El Hamid goes to close him down into the box. Does well with Israeli, but the ball spins back to the left back. James Forrest wrestled to the ground there. A rugby tackle, I think Flanagan knew he'd lost control of the ball, but good defensive play there from James Forrest. Yeah, as we touched on earlier on, he's possibly having to do a wee bit more than he would like, James, defensive duties, but gets his body in front there and wins the free kick. We have four minutes of the first half, possibly a minute or two of, of 
added time for the treatment to El Hamid and Bolingoli. So far, so good. As Celtic's number 67, the goalkeeper, gets ready to launch this one long. And Martin Edward with that goal in 31 minutes. Mikey Johnson, the provider. Martin Edward, the executioner, has given Celtic the lead here in the first Glasgow derby of the season. And for Foster, knocks that one long. Flanagan heads it back. El Hamid, good header. But this time Flanagan knocks it over the halfway line. Defoe under pressure. Arfield plays that one out, and it should be a throw into. to I thought it should have been a throw into Celtic, but it's going off as a knock on a Celtic player. The Rangers have the ball down the left-hand side. Flanagan will take up the plate. Davis moves forward, back again to the Rangers left-back. He's had plenty of the ball in this first half, and more so than the man on the ball now, Tavernier, but the Rangers captain. Looking to try and work an opening to deliver this one into the box. Mikey Johnson challenges, the ball's played low. It's cleared down here by at the front of the six-yard box. Jo Mikey Johnson, Johnson. Johnson's got down yet. Uh, I'm not sure if he's taken an up now. He just tried to steal that from Tavernier there. I don't know if he's got a knock or told something. He's back on his feet now as Lewis Morgan and Olivier Encham go to warm up. And again, Tavernier plays it into the area and once more it's near Vuitton, he heads it clear only as far as the edge of the area. Davis cushions it down to Flanagan. Uh, a more attack-minded player might have thought about the shot there. Instead it's over to the left-hand side, Davis can force back. James Forrest does well. Forrest knocks that one out of play, but good closing down play there by... Celtic, that's exactly what Neil Lennon wants, he's applauding his team, Davis on the ball again, Flanagan has to roll that one back, Katic, it's out, well it's out of play, well, I think Katic was maybe unhappy at the, the, the linesman's position, and maybe just took his eye off the ball as well, but Celtic have the throw in, and we are edging ever closer, 90 seconds plus added time of this first half, Neil Lennon would certainly now just like to see the team get in at half time with that, that goal lead. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, it's been a good first half performance. They've got the goal within the lead. Davis on the ball. He's challenged there by Christie. And it's out from this near side. It's a throw in to Rangers, 25 yards from their own goal. Flanagan tries to take that one quickly. Not back. Forrest down towards Brown. Brown tries to fire it forward, but it's intercepted by Arfield. He rolls it across, Rangers on the attack into the last 60 seconds, it's Tavernier, knocks that one too far ahead of him, it's Johnson, plays it forward, and eventually near Gaton, picks up the plate. Well, I think the manager would have been looking for him to, to clear that one. Christie goes down, good play from Ryan Christie, just coaxed the foul there, and near Gaton, maybe the midfielder, uh, took that ball rather than the defender. Yeah, Again, it's 100 miles an hour in there and it just overruns it a little bit into traffic. A bit scrappy and unlike him. But Celtic have the free kick and we're just waiting the fourth official to come out with his board to tell us how many added minutes. There's Neil Baton, looks to play this one long. Instead gives it to Scott Brown. Back now to Callum McGregor. Now to near Beton. McGregor's almost at the left back position. Fires that one forward to Hudson Edward who comes short. Out wide to Bolingoli. Back inside now towards Edward. Challenge Brown. Brown's the first to react. Knocks it across here. Flanagan in the centre circle. And good interception there from Bobby Madden. There'll be four added minutes and that'll be for the, the various treatment for the Celtic players. So we're into those four added minutes. Arrival on this right hand side up against Callum McGregor. And the ball out of play and good battling play there. I'm not sure if Arrival might come out for the second half because he's I think he's he's toiled with the pace of the game. Yeah, and again Callum epitomising the first half of Celtic there, you know, not giving him a second on the ball, trying to win it back and forcing him into the mistake. Ball and Golly hooks that one up towards the halfway line, but it's headed down only as far as Scott Brown. McGregor. This time taking no chances and firing it long. Ball and Golly wins that header. Johnson this time box it clear. Celtic just 
clear in their lines at the moment, just want to see out the game to half time. El Hamid challenges there. And a free kick just over the halfway line. Well, it's about 10 yards away from where yeah. the free kick was. But I think Rangers are just going to launch this one into the area. Steve Davis will take this one. Every Celtic player back defending. There's a Foster just on the edge of his <coughs> six-yard box. Neil Lennon and John Kennedy in the edge of their technical area. The ball over on the far side. It should be out for a goal kick. And Celtic have the ball. And they've gone almost two of the four added minutes. And I suppose how the score line is it have to it'll dictate the, the respective team to, team talks. But whatever Neil Lennon said at the start, it'll be it'll be good for him to be emphasise that if we're going at half time leading by a goal to nil. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, he'll be really happy with the, the first half. You know, the team are right up for us today. We've got the goal in front. You know, and it's a dangerous position to be sitting on. You know, Rangers are going to have to come out and try and get back in the game, and, and hopefully Celtic can exploit that. You know, in the second half. The ball thrown inside towards Arfield, he tries to work it on, but El Hamid read that one well. Knocks it out and cross there towards Johnson. Johnson tries to get beyond Tavernier, just knocked it too far ahead of him. Goldson takes up the play. Not too many options for the central defender. Davis tries to feed it towards his man, it's not followed by Jack. And it's is a foster with the goal kick and Celtic will be in no great hurry to take this set piece we have gone three of the four added minutes and so far so good for Neil Lennon's side they lead by that goal just after the half hour mark Watson Edward, the man who has given Celtic the lead and Fraser Foster thankfully has not really had too much to do so far in this game as Watson Edward challenges with goals and the ball spins across Johnson heads up and on looking for James Forrest who drifted inside Flanagan just plays a a high ball forward, the Celtic defence just have to shepherd that one back. Near Beton. Cool play from the Israeli. Knocks it long up towards the halfway lane. Johnson up against Tavernier, he just got behind them. The ball to Aribo, he's into the box. The Celtic again just trying to defend. The ball cut across, Julian heads that one clear only as far as Jack. Back again to the edge of the area, it's fired high wide and behind for a goal kick I suppose at some point Celtic are just going to be under pressure it's about 10 seconds I don't think Bobby Madden is even going to let Fraser Foster take the goal kick and Celtic with the half time lead and it has been a performance that Simon you, you want and you expect from a Celtic team in this in Derby and they've got the goal they deserve yeah a professional 45 minutes there you know a real hunger to go and win the ball put pressure on Rangers when they're in possession and a little bit of class, you know, from Mikey Johnson, a lovely threaded pass through. Composure personified from Edward for the finish. And it's a, a, a really satisfactory first 45. So far, so good for Neil Lennon's side as they head up the tunnel area. Here at half-time at Ibrox, it is Rangers now. Celtic one, right-hand side, Arfield curls it into the box. Pozo forced to play that one out wide. Flanagan knocks it forward towards Aribo on his right foot tries to thread that one through the foe is blocked Rangers have the corner defended well again from Beaton there you know just stood his ground and managed to block the, the threat from the foe I suppose it's as you would expect these early stages at the home side just trying to, to get back into this game yeah definitely uh, as I said hopefully we can exploit that you know going the other way but it's important these early minutes in the first uh, the second half to defend Properly. The ball into the six-yard box, punched strongly away from Foster, almost found its way to Mikey Johnson. Tavernier knocks out into the far side. Well, Hamid heads it clear, only as far as Arfield rolls it to Davis. Davis edge of the area, stabs it back inside, but it's picked up by Christie. Christie knocks it through, he's fouled, the referee will wave play on. Scott Brown floats that one through, and Flanagan had to get his head in that one, otherwise... As the ball's played towards Mikey Johnson, Johnson, Johnson dances past Tavernier, still Johnson. Well, Celtic almost got the break of the ball there, but Rangers regain possession. And I suppose that's what you were touching on, Simon, in their anxiety to push forward, maybe slight pass to Celtic. Yeah, can... that's, that's what we hope for. I, th I think Mikey Johnson, I'm sure he got pulled back there in the initial 
part of that, so, yeah. that move, you know, and it, it, it stopped it a little bit, slowed it down. Julian clears that one, Katic chests it down, Brian Jack controls it. And then just <coughs> drive forward down the left hand side with Aribo. Still Aribo knocks it across, but only finds Johnson Johnson back to Callum McGregor. McGregor shrugs off one challenge, drives past Flanagan, goes down. Well, he was looking for the foul there, nothing given. The Rangers have a throw in. And the ball back with Golson. Across now to Ryan Jack. It's almost you feel like it's kind of like the calm before the storm of the second half in these early stages. Yeah, uh, Rangers have started the first five, six minutes, you know, on the front foot here. I just feel we're a you know, if we can break this possession and, and, and break quickly, we've got the pace from midfield to front to, to pick the second goal off. Ball over the top, <laughs> harmlessly back to Fraser Foster. No Ryan just ushering his team up into position. We have gone almost seven minutes of the second half already. And it's still that one goal in the first half, the difference between the sides. Golson wins the header. McGregor challenges with our field. Davis picks up the ball, drives through. Feeds Defoe. Defoe on the edge of the area up against Julian. Good, strong challenge there from the Frenchman. The ball breaks back to Davis. He's forced to play it back to Ryan Jack. Good defending there from Julian. Tavernier on this right flank. Plays it off Mikey Johnson. I think he landed on Johnson too. Well. Paul and Golly, good challenge there. Wins a throw in. And the Belgian will make his way down this left hand side. And eventually. I think Scott Brown was telling him to take it quicker to be fair he was warmed to, there to stop and take it as Scott Brown intercepts drives past his man, still Scott Brown still Scott Brown driving forward he's got Forrest through the middle and Aribo eventually gets a foot in but wonderful play there from the Celtic captain well I thought for a minute there might have been a, it was a fantastic goal. initial play there he just should maybe have released it a wee bit quicker you know, I don't think he knew Aribo was there Skips by two or three Rangers players and just slot Edward in there. Davis on the ball, gives it to Rebo. Forced to check back, he's on the halfway line. Davis again into the centre circle, starts to move forward. Brian Jack on the right back roll at the moment. The Celtic pressing the ball. And it's a cross now to Katic. Creation forward Flanagan comes off Forrest. You mentioned the first half to, to get James Forrest on the ball and really test Flanagan. Yeah, and as I say, most of the game James has been working for the team, you know, in a, a defensive point of view. I'd like to see him get a bit more of the ball in the Rangers half and, and get at Flanagan. Celtic working so hard to try and close down the ball. Colson moves forward. Switches it out way to Tavernier. Tavernier up against Ball and Golly. Again, cuts him off the right flank. Switches it across and Julian's the first to react there. A good clearance. Hudson Edward almost gets on the end of that. Forrest knocks the ball forward. Sliding challenge with Katic. They've got enough to run it back for a rebo. Rojo, edge of the box, left hand side. Trying to work an opening, the ball spins off him. And then just player picks up the loose ball again, Forrest back defending. And gets his heels clipped and again does well, just gets his body in front of his mind. Yeah, similar to the first half there, gets his body in front, forces the foul, good defending from, from Forrest there. Just don't want to be sitting back too much here, you know, and inviting pressure on us if we can try and get a bit more of the ball and move it towards the Rangers goal. Ten minutes of the second half gone already. It's still that one goal in 31 minutes, the difference between the sides, and Celtic have a free kick, edge of their own penalty area on the right-hand side. Fraser Foster 
launches it long. Once and over again goes for it, but it's Katic wins the header. Scott Brown knocks it inside. It's played forward, and Julian plays that one over the top. Tavernier's got time just to bring that one down. Mikey Johnson goes to close him down, and he knocks it all the way back to his goalkeeper. It's like the Rangers in these early stages have played more of the ball than they did in the first half. He's beat on with Arfield, he knocks it on. Defoe gets his body in front of Julian, it's knocked high over to the far side, looking for Ojo, and again it's El Hamid in a chase with him, and the Rangers player couldn't keep that one in play, and Celtic have the throw on, they're certainly looking to try and, and, and feed that ball out wide to the left whenever they get an opportunity. Yeah, I think he's, he's a running machine, Ojo, I think he's used his pace there, a couple of minutes ago, he's a threat with the pace, but they're managing the situation up until now. Well, Hamid knocks that one up towards the halfway line. Golson in the centre circle. Then just take up the play just over the halfway line again. Christie working his way across the line. Davis has dropped very deep. He's into the centre circle now. Over the halfway line. Clavels that one over the top looking for Ojo. Ojo. The ball just spins, he volleys it, and it's saved at the near post. Well, he just got beyond his man there just after his talking about that danger, and Fraser Foster did well. Yeah, he looks a threat, you know, the pace over the... Nice to get in behind El Hamid there. And almost caught Foster out of the near post. Rangers with their second corner of the second half. It's going to be another in-swinger. Celtic back defending this one. It's headed clear, well, headed clear by near Beton. Matthew Johnson blocks that one and it's out for a throw-in over on the far side. They're defending the set-piece as well, so far Celtic at Neil Lennon just urging the team just to step up the pace. Yeah, I, th I think right through from the start, anything early into the box, we've dealt with really well, you know, Julian and Beaton have won most of the battles in there. Callum McGregor, put on the ball there, no shot, sprints almost to the corner flag, up against Ball and Golly. He's Bopped the ball out and could play again from the Belgian. And we just have to make sure he doesn't steal too many yards. And he's filled there and he did well just to win the free kick. He's given Celtic an opportunity to, to clear the lines. Well, you can see Scott Brown just trying to G up the team there as well in the heart of the park. that's where he, he's crucial in these games yeah just what I was saying there I think he's maybe saying to the team let's get going again here you know we don't want to be sitting in here for the next half hour inviting Rangers on top of us and defending a 1-0 lead let's get back into this game and pose a threat going the other way there's a Foster knocks that one long again looking for Odson Edward up against Golson Golson heads it in the air Christie challenges with Davis it's knocked over on the far side Flanagan's there, just ahead of Forrest. The ball knocked back again into the middle of the park. Davis switches it out way to this near side. Tavernier takes up the play, plays it down the lane, but Ball and Golly read it well. Knocks it inside towards Callum McGregor. Forward to Odson Edward, good first touch from the Frenchman. Manages to spin round his man, but couldn't find Forrest. There we go, spins and spins again. I think he's frustrating his own fans this afternoon. And Rangers about to make their first change, and it's going to be Alfredo Morelos who comes on. So a goal threat for Rangers. We shall see who he replaces. And it will be Defoe, so it's just a light for light. So a new threat and a, a dangerous player. Yeah, just a straight swap. Uh, in terms of finishing, I'm glad to see Defoe get off, you know, he's a, he's a threat round about the box. This guy's more power and pace. Uh, but again, we touch on the size of our centre-backs, hopefully they can, they can deal with him. Celtic with the throw-in in front of their own technical area. Ball and golly. Knocks it inside towards Johnson, it's hooked high in the air by Jack. Headed on only as far as Callum McGregor tries to knock that one through towards Davis. And suddenly Morelis gets his first touch, he's driving forward, goes beyond Beaton, he's in the edge of the box, takes a shot, let's go wide. Well, probably the better option would have been to cut inside to Arfield, who's telling him that, but thankfully he just one thought in his mind, and well, thankfully it went wide. Yeah, it's positive play, you know, and that's the threat where he's very, very direct. Uh, we just need to keep the ball a bit better. It's unlike Callum there giving that ball away. We need to keep the ball in the middle of the park a little bit better. 
15 minutes of this half and we're, we're kind of on the back foot just now. So Celtic with the goal kick, just over an hour gone here. Ibrox, Edson Edward, the man, the difference between the sides and he's challenging through there with Goldson. And Alan McGregor just smothers that on the edge of the area. Katic under pressure but manages to find Davis. Spot to the left hand side to Arfield on the halfway line. Drives forward down the left hand side, forced to check his run, comes inside and switches it across towards his captain. Mikey Johnson goes to close down Tavernier. Ryan Jack takes up the plate. On the ball again, knocks that one forward. Ojo gives it to Tavernier. Tavernier crosses it into the area, only finds the header. Beat on this time, McGregor knocks it forward to Hudson Edward. He takes up the play. Two men round him, and he wins a throw in. He's so good at doing that. Yeah, he takes the ball in. Protects it, wins the, the throw in, good play, relieves the pressure. I think there's a lot of space in behind, you know, with Rangers pushing for Edward to exploit here, Paul. Paul and Golly knocks that one forward. And Tavernier, well, just took his eye off the ball there and just knocked it up the tunnel area. And Celtic have a throw in down their left hand side, start to make their way over the halfway line. And Cham's getting ready. So Celtic could be set to make their first change. Still Odson Edward on the ball, looked like a foul. A wonderful play there from the French. Well, who would you expect him to come on for? Not sure. Uh, I don't know if somebody's got a knock. Oh, Mikey took a knock to, towards the end of the first half. Uh, Celtic with a set piece opportunity. Julian and Beaton come forward. They have won everything in the air in their own area. Could they win something in the Rangers area? A second goal now would make it very difficult for the home side to come back. 62 minutes on the clock. Ryan Christie can deliver this one over to the far side. Can he find a Celtic head? Christie floats it to the far post. There's no one there. Beaton sprints with Flanagan for that one. And he manages to prevent it going out. And it's a throw in to Rangers. And that was about 10 yards away. It's near Beton, I think. He took a knock there. Yeah. Yeah. I think he collided with a, an advertising post and signaling for the bench. Yeah, oh, oh that's not a hamstring. Well, yeah, it looks as if he's, he's holding his hamstring. Here comes Celtic. The ball knocked through towards Edwards. Yeah, in. Johnson tried to knock that through. Christie. Across towards Julian. Well, near Beton is going to have to come him. off and that is not good news for Celtic. He's had a fine game this afternoon but not sure if he, he pulled a muscle as El Hamid curls it across to this near side and Tavernier hooks it clear. Ball and golly challenges as near Beton makes his way painfully back into the area. Near James Forrest James dispossesses. Forrest. James Forrest into the area, still Forrest. Stumbles there, just could not keep his balance. Callum McGregor loses out against Dojo. Well, Celtic are out of position at the moment, and it's a slack pass from Ojo. And near Beton. Well, he's in a lot of pain there, and he is going to have to require treatment. I think it's his hamstring. Well, that's a real blow. Yeah. He's the composure at the back for us, and I think he just chases the ball into the, the corner there. It gets a push off Flanagan, and I think he's pulled his hamstring going into the advertisement board. And probably the, the change, I mean, you look at the, the Celtic bench, would be El Hamid to move inside and, and uh, Bauer yeah. to, to slot in at right back. Yeah. yeah. So, a real bit of open play there as well. James just get the ball cut under his feet there, you know. Usually you'd see him shift that and shoot. And just get stuck under his feet. So near Beton receiving treatment at the moment. He's back on his feet. Hopefully he will be able to continue. Well, he doesn't look as if he's going to get replaced at the moment. That's for sure. He looks in real discomfort. And mm -hmm. when you're up against somebody with the pace and the relish, you, you don't want to, to take any chances. No, and if it's a hamstring, it's not going to get it's only going to get worse. Near Beton just limping off, and Celtic are going to make a change, and it is going to be a debut for Marix Bauer as El Hamid comes over, and I think he's going to slot in. He, he can play central defence, he's played there before for Beersheba, 
He's just getting some instructions from Neil Lennon. So Celtic's number 13 is about to come on and Olivia and Cham about to come on as well. So one plan change, one enforced change. Yeah, and we spoke about a makeshift back four. It's, it's definitely going to be now. You know, they're going to have to... James Forrest is coming off. So, James Forrest comes off. Olivia and Cham comes on. So two so changes for Celtic. Totally new back four. Incredible. <laughs> so Celtic with just about 25 minutes remaining. And uh, when it's Bauer, will get his first touch of the ball. A throw in down this right-hand side. So a, a tough game for him to come into. And El Hamid just takes his place in central defence alongside Julian. Well, he's got, certainly got a long throw in anyway. And he's on his well, side, corner. a corner. Well, we like yeah. him already. Yeah. <laughs> Very unlike Celtic, with a long throw there, but we get the corner. Yeah, El Hamid stays back with Bolly Bolingoli. Ryan Christie goes over to take this corner. Celtic's first of the second half, the second corner of the game. It's going to be an in-swinger. It's just in front of the Celtic fans here. Uh, could Celtic get a second goal from this set-piece? It would certainly settle some nerves. As Christie scoops that to the far post. Now it's gone beyond everyone in behind for a goal kick. Uh, Coming into a key period in the game here. And Olivia and Cham. Ryan Christie looks as if he's dropped out to the way to the right and then Cham's just in the middle, just alongside or just behind Odson Edwards. Yeah, yeah. And he gives you that pace as well and he's, he's much better in, in that position. That's there's a threat round about the goal in Cham as well, as we've seen over last season, you know, scored some really good goals. We need his energy now in the middle of the park. Well, Hamid challenges for that one. Uh, versatile player, and he's going to have to show that versatility this afternoon. Moritz Bauer just joined the other day as the team were in Stockholm. And he is getting his first chance in Celtic colours. Christie challenges for that one. It breaks back to Arfield. Switch across to Arrivo on his left foot. Plays it low, and again... Well, there's a Foster, didn't even have to move, but it makes it look so cool. Yeah, I think the th the two, I think maybe the two players, Brown and Bauer, got a block on that, just took the pace off it as well. There's a Foster on just the ball. See us get a bit of possession here. Katic wins that one. And Martin Edward penalised for the challenge on the creation. And Goldson on the ball. John Kennedy again on the edge of the technical area. The ball knocked inside towards Morelli's Rangers about to make their second change and it will be the former commander Jordan Jones who's going to come on. It's Tavernier. Spreads that one through into the area. Scott Brown does well, reads it well, but Rangers have another corner. Damien Duff shouting instructions. And just getting a warning from the fourth official. The Rangers have a corner, everyone back defending for Celtic. Tavernier with the outswinger. Fires it to the edge of the six-yard box and it's gone out of play. And Celtic have the goal kick and Rangers will make another change. It will be Jordan Jones to come on, so a, a wide threat again. And we shall see who he replaces on this side. Damien Duff. Just shout the instructions. Paul and The set plays, obviously, the back four is totally new. I think just show them where they want to. Or who they want to pick up at, at set plays. So, Arrivo off, Jordan Jones on. So, Ojo has come over to the right hand side. Jones is over on the left hand side. And we have just over 20 minutes of the match remaining. And still, Celtic lead by a goal to nil. They haven't really had a chance in the second half. and because it only takes one chance as the ball's knocked over Wade on the right-hand side. Christie goes for that one. Jones gets his first touch and Bauer does well. But the ball breaks to Rangers. It's played forward, looking for Morellas. It's out wide for a throw-in. 
And I suppose when you've got it, we, we saw it already with Bauer, if, you know, the fact he's going to go to the launch, this one up to the halfway line, it does take you up the park a bit. Yeah, here he goes again. And again, and for some reason, defenders are able to deal much better with crosses and corners than they are with, with long throws. throws. <laughs> yeah. The ball bobbing about in the middle of the park. Scott Brown wins that challenge. Yeah. Breaks to Hudson Edward. Here comes Celtic, a chance. Hudson Edward, could he score again? Oh, he just unleashed a shot with a yard or so over. He'd worked the space for himself, and that is the, the first real chance of the second half for yeah, Celtic. And it, as you say, he worked it really well. A couple of touches, let the man go to ground. You really expect him to hit the target there, but I'd like to see a bit more of that. You know, Scott Brown wins the ball well there, and immediately there's danger because Rangers are pressing forward themselves. Well, Mikey Johnson looking to see who had clattered into the back of him. It was Bolly Ball and Golly. He's attacking that ball. And it's back now with the Rangers back line. Katic, the Celtic fans, and fine voice. Flanagan goes down. There's Christie, chips that one into the back of the net. Soft foul, but good finish, actually. <laughs> And this is getting to, I suppose, the really nervy time with just under 20 minutes to go. The Celtic are they tempted to hold on to what they've got or, or try and go for that second goal? Yeah. Uh, Scott Brown certainly full blooded in these challenges. Katic takes up the plate. Davis on the halfway lane. The ball switched back again. And Morellas. Goes down, as he often does, under the challenge. El Hamid runs that head up. And I think he's Bauer just knocks it across. Johnson just cushions it out way towards Bollingoli. Forward now to Johnson. Johnson up against Ryan Jack. Good play there from Mikey Johnson. In champ. Back to Johnson again. Brought down by Tavernier. Good play. Good play there for Johnson, just keeping the ball, you know, that's what I'm saying, just try and keep the ball, protect it, take a foul there. The Celtic have a free kick, just a yard or so inside the other one half, ball and golly on the ball. Watson Edward is the option, the ball not forward as Edward came short, and Katic actually could have just left it there, I think the frustration for his manager. Watson Edward goes down, referee raise play on. Well knocked inside, Davis switches it across to the left hand side. Over the halfway line, Rangers down their left flank. Jones knocks it inside. The ball to Ojo. Four players round him, it manages to roll it across to Flanagan, works it out wide to Jones. Jones up against Bauer, goes down. Under pressure from Christie, and it's a chance for Rangers to deliver the ball into the box. A dangerous set piece. Again, every Celtic player back defending this one. And again, the big men, Goldson, Katic up for Rangers at the back. Tavernier, we know he can put a good delivery in. Celtic have to defend this one. Fraser Foster just shouting instructions. He's just on his right hand post at the moment. It's only McGregor as the wall. But Tavernier's just going to whip this one into the dangerous area. It's headed clear, good strong header there from Julian. Mikey Johnson challenges Hudson Edward and suddenly Celtic on the attack. Mm. In champ, Mikey good. Johnson switches it across to in champ. Still in champ. And the ball played out to the left hand side. This is good play from Celtic to Volangoli. Out to in champ. Back again to the Belgian, edge of the area. Christie to in champ. Takes a shot on the spin and gone behind Can for it. a corner. Good play from Celtic. Great play. As we've said from the start of this, this half, that's the threat, you know, if we can win the ball back and attack quickly. There's chances there. Ryan Christie will come over to take this one on the near side. Well, it's a couple of shots that Celtic have now managed to get away. Bio and Lewis Morgan just warming up in front of us in the main stand. But Celtic with the second corner of the second half, 15 minutes of the match remaining. And Celtic looking for the second goal that will give them a real stranglehold in this game. The last couple of corners have gone to the far post. Julian scored midweek. Can he score again? The ball scooped again to the back post. It's headed clear. It's McGregor. Takes a shot. It's low. In charm. Curls it. And it spins. And again, 
It lands in the roof of the net while Celtic getting closer, Simon. Yeah, great strike from McGregor, blocked, caught it really sweet. Comes back to Enchami, tries to guide it in. And then another corner. And this is exactly where Celtic want the ball, deep in Rangers territory. They want to be on the front foot. And most importantly, they want a second goal. Well, it was 31 minutes of the first half that they scored the opener. We're at the 31st minute of the second half. Can they make it 2-0? Christie plays it short. Gets the return from Johnson. Cuts inside. Still Christie. Chance for El Hamid. It's saved by the feet of McGregor. McGregor. Callum McGregor takes it. Low. It's a chance for Celtic. It's oh, saved it's again by Alan McGregor. Well, he is keeping his side in this game. Two saves from the Rangers goalkeeper. Callum McGregor back inside towards Odson Edward. He's into the box. to Edward. Oh, and the ball eventually scrambled clear. Bauer wins that header strongly. It's hooked back towards Julian. Rangers under siege there as El Hamid wins that ball. Celtic so close to a second goal, but they now have to get back into a defensive position. Here comes Rangers down the left hand side with Morellas. Drives forward. The ball breaks to Jones. Bauer goes down. And it's gone out for a corner kick over on the far side. Well, Alan McGregor has kept his side in this game, Simon. A couple of fantastic saves, a great passage of play there. The second one in particular just breaks, I think, to Julian in the box. He swings at it and McGregor manages to save it, I think, his legs. Rangers with the corner kick. Another in-swinger, Davis, fires it across, looking for a Celtic head. It's ball and golly. It's volleyed by Jack, it's blocked by McGregor. Morelis on the right-hand side. Scoops it into the area, it's headed. And Fraser Foster happy to see that one behind. Arfield got his head on it but couldn't direct it goalwards. And Celtic have the goal kick and we have just under 13 minutes remaining. And still Celtic lead by a goal to nil. And maybe the last five, ten minutes when we made the changes, they're, they're starting to come into it in an attacking sense now. Yeah, as I say, we had a threat on the break. And it would have been nice just to, if we could have got the second goal there, take a wee bit of the pressure off. But a couple of Great saves from McGregor in quick succession, it's, it's still one now. This time Katic does just usher that back to his goalkeeper. And Rangers <laughs> build from the back, Golson. Looks it across looking for Tavernier, well it was a slap pass in the first half that gave Celtic the opening and he's given the ball away, Golson. Frustration for the home support. Follow ball and golly on the ball. Gives it to Inchamp. The ball back and he knocks it all the way back to Fraser Foster. Left footed, high over the halfway line. The ball headed on, good play there from Watson Edward. But Rangers shepherd it back to the goalkeeper. He's taking no chances at all and just knocks it high into the Celtic half. But El Hamid wins that one up against Christie. The ball spending a lot of time in the air. Ball and golly, challenges for that one, Brown. Still Celtic battle for the ball. And Ryan Jack eventually manages to work it out wide. Rangers out of the area with Jones. Jones goes towards the touchline, plays it low. It's blocked, corner kick. Yeah, good defending. Dangerous position when Jones picks it up in that final third and gets at you in the box. Good defending from Bauer. Another corner, Rangers fifth of the second half so far, Celtic have defended the corner as well. The ball fired across, again it's headed clear. Tavernier, oh, it wasn't too far away, it was good technique, but thankfully it was high and behind for a goal kick. Yeah, again, we defend it really well, we really come into the box, we win it. As it breaks to Tavernier, who's a, who has a threat, you know, he's got a great strike on him. Thankfully it goes over the bar. Celtic with the goal kick, they are edging ever closer but there are still 10 minutes of this much match plus added time to go, as Fraser Foster knocks that one long, missed by Tavernier, Johnson sprints for that one, McGregor will come out to clear it, knocks it over the halfway line, Julien, powerful header from the Frenchman, Ryan Jack, Davis back to Golson, and this time he plays it all the way back to his goalkeeper, the two McGregors there. The ball headed on El Hamid up against Morelles. And Morelles 
goes down, wins the free kick in another dangerous position, another set piece, and there's a lot of the ball's knocked quickly by Morelis to Jack. Jack plays it low, it's blocked at the expense of a corner there, and Scott Brown had to be alert. Yeah, thankfully, Brownie switched on there, you know, they take the quick free kick and almost, almost catches cold. So He's read the situation, the captain, and managed to put it out for a corner. Another corner kick for Rangers. This time it's going to be an outswinger from Davis. Scoops it to the edge of the six yard box. And well, it's going out for another corner. I'm not sure the Bauer thought it might have been going out for a goal kick, but Celtic under pressure here. Nine minutes and counting. And Rangers with another set piece. They're going back defending for Celtic as Davis fires it to the near post. It's headed clear by Hudson Edward. Incham knocks that over the halfway line. McGregor races out. Flanagan takes up the plate. Out wide to the left hand side. Jones drives forward, goes beyond Christie. Up against Bauer. And I think he just ran out of pitch. And it's gone behind, and Celtic have the goal kick. And relief, it's going to be the longest eight or nine <laughs> minutes of my life here. At that clock, willing it to, to run out quicker. Well, certainly from the set pieces, Celtic have, have, you know, they've made sure somebody's got on the end of them, and that's so important because... Yeah, they're, they're and, well, and the back four's been crashing, you know, we've had to do a bit of shuffle at the start of this season, but I think Julian's won a lot today in there. The ball out in this near side, just in front of the Celtic technical area. Volleyball and Golly will take this one. Uh, Celtic will certainly not be in any great hurry to take any of these, but I'm sure there'll be a few added minutes. And Cham drives inside, good play, gives it to his fellow countrymen. Back to Encham, oh. Encham, side foots it, it's a chance. Oh, oh he just couldn't quite <laughs> direct his header. Goal was there, wonderful combination play from the two Frenchmen. Great play, great play gets in and goal. He decides to hit it with inside his foot, it comes back to him and he almost, he almost scores with the rebound. Oh, so close. Still just a one goal in it. Scott Brown gets there ahead of our field. Well, he's fouled by two players there. Well, I'm not sure what the advantage is. And Champ. I think Celtic would rather have taken the free kick there yeah, rather than yeah. the, the ball. And the ball out of play. Mikey Johnson, Johnson scores down. Uh, I think Lewis Morgan might be the third and final change just in that position. I think Hayes is getting stripped. Uh, Johnny Hayes, well, certainly from the physical battle, you know Johnny Hayes will get absolutely stuck in. Not had many opportunities this season, Johnny Hayes. But he is going to come on now. I think that's just cramped with Mikey's putting a, a hell of a shift today. Well, we have six minutes plus added time. I guess it will be about another four or five minutes of added time because there's been the, the injury to beat on as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad for him, you know, he's, he took a bit of stick after his, his last game here at Ibrox, but creates the goal today and has really put a shift in for the club. And Johnny Hayes immediately takes up a position on the left flank, he'll be offering support to Bolly Bollingoli. Ball played through and Bollingoli does well, just clears that one long deep into Rangers territory I'm sure the Rangers players the Rangers fans will be aware of the clock on the big screen but still the ball not forward looking for Morelles his first touch let him down and it's gone behind for a goal kick and Celtic will just want to try and take this thing out of the game as well yeah yeah you see we just want that clock to run down a little bit quicker and Incham, Incham's beginning to find wee pockets of space as well between midfield and defence. Yeah, and when he first came to the club, you know, I thought he was a, I thought at first he was playing in a kind of sitting role in the middle of the park, but he's more than capable of playing there, as we've seen there with the one-two Edward. He's got that creative side to his game. 
McGregor plays that one long. Johnny Hayes wins the header. He's got a small guy, he wins a lot of balls in there. And Golson again walks it back to his goalkeeper. And we are into the last five minutes of the game here at Ibrox. And still Celtic lead by that Odson Edward goal in the first half. There's a ball out way to Tavernier just in front of his own dugout. El Hamid up against Dojo. Dojo stays on his feet. And the ball out of play and Celtic have the throw in. He's had a fine game as well. Yeah, they've, they've defended really well. It's a pretty... Uh, Bauer can't come over to the left-hand side just to, to throw that one down the line as well. <laughs> Right-footed ball high in the area. Scott Brown penalised. Steve Davis challenges for that one. And Rangers have another free kick, another opportunity to deliver the ball into the box. Once more, Tavernier is the, the man. Let his let, let question up. I, I don't, how is that a foul? Davis comes over the top him. A two-man wall and Cham and Hayes, everyone else back in the area. The ball fired to the far side. And it's gone behind and it's a goal kick again to Celtic. And we are edging ever closer. Celtic know we are so close now. Well, Christopher Julian and Fraser Foster are not happy with Alfredo Morelles. It's always Morelles. And uh, must always be in the back of his manager's mind. The, yeah. the, the discipline that he, or the yeah, old discipline last, he has. Last year, stupid, and he's, he's now wanted into something with Julian. I think Julian was indicating there that he felt as if he'd tried to headbutt him you know, when he went to the ground there. Tavernier heads that one back. There's a challenge now. Julian, and it's a kick there by Morelles on Scott Brown, and the linesman on this near side go should on, be seen there. Incham gathers the ball. Flicks it inside to Johnny Hayes. Hayes into the area. Plays it low. Oh it's yeah. just blocked in the line. Golson saves a certain goal because Odson Edward was there. Wonderful play. Great play. First from in charm. Sticks it into to Johnny Hayes. Scott Brown's now going to go to the, the fourth official there because Morelis had a kick at him. And Celtic with a corner kick with two minutes plus added time to go here. Johnny Hayes and Ryan Christie over the ball. Christie, back to Hayes, to Incham. Plays it down the line towards Christie. Christie drives towards goal. Still Ryan Christie. Christie into the area. Falls back. And he wins that free kick. Well, surely that's a free, that's a free kick. kick. That's a free kick. Well, certainly John Kennedy and Damien Duff could not quite believe that. 90 seconds plus added time, the ball played long. <coughs> ball and golly challenges for that one. El Hamid is there. Well, really needed to clear that one with a bit more conviction. Go on, go on. Incham been held back there. I mean, that's ridiculous. And Scott Arfield will be booked for that. The easiest yellow card they'll see. Uh, Ryan Christie questioning why there wasn't a free kick when he was bundled over the ball. And well, he, he gave two against James Forrest for the same thing. Get your body in front and, you know, win the free kick. And he decides not to give it that time. Free kick on the halfway line. We are almost at the 90 minute mark. The fourth official comes out with his board. The Celtic fans in fine voice, but we know there's still time to go. Tavernier picks that one high over the halfway line. El Hamid loses out against Morelles. Morelles goes down. Well, I mean, there was absolutely nothing in that for a free kick. Why is he getting his? So there will be six added minutes. Oh, 
I thought maybe four, or, or possibly six is a extraordinary amount of time. And we are into the first of those six added minutes in Tavernier to deliver this one into the box. Callum McGregor heads that one, this ball's knocked back. Arfield loses out against McGregor, who just knocks it high in the air. Tavernier will take this one. Plays it quickly to Jack. Back to Tavernier, he keeps that one in play. Fires it to the far post. Headed back, scooped high in there. Well, Fraser Foster could come for that one. In fact, it's headed behind for a goal kick. It's going to be a long six minutes, I know. Ball and goal is down there, I think. I think that could be cramped as well. I suppose the referee's just going to add time on yeah. after the six yeah. minutes. That's an Edward just over at the sidelines just now. And the Celtic coaching staff questioning the, the six minute decision. Celtic so close now to all three points. It would be a fourth consecutive win in the Premiership maintain the 100% record. Fraser Foster would have another clean sheet. And Cham heads that one on. It's a chance for Odson Edwards. Well, I don't Flags think up. he was offside. I think Flanagan was playing him on side. Possibly. I just I, I, the only reason I said it, I, I seen the linesman put his flag up straight away. Well, I'd it, like was to see that. it was tight. I'd like to see that one again. Alan McGregor knocks that one long. Christopher Julian rises for that one. Good, powerful header. Chance for Hayes, knocks it on. Still Hayes, here comes Celtic. Chance Come on, for Johnny son. Hayes, the substitute. Can he score? Can he make it 2-0? Johnny Hayes, he scored! <laughs> the Irishman has scored and Celtic have all three points. The players, the fans, well the done. substitute celebrate. What a goal, what an intervention. Celtic with all three points. Brilliant play, we've said that from the start of the second half. If we can win the ball quickly, we're a threat on the attack. Brilliant play from Hayes. Thought he'd missed the opportunity, it comes back to him and he rolls it into the back of the net. Brilliant. Well, an inspired substitution. Johnny Hayes will absolutely love that goal. The Celtic fans over in that corner are delirious. Just in case you weren't aware, it's blue seats at Ibrox because we can see quite a lot of them suddenly appearing now as a lot of the home fans have decided it's time to go home. And Celtic will go home with all three points, four consecutive wins, and it's no more than they've deserved. They've had to dig in in the second half, It's Simon. been a fantastic team performance from the first kick of the ball. Boys have worked their socks off, defended when they needed to. The back four's been questioned, it's been shuffled about. We've defended everything into the box and we've picked Rangers off again there. Game over. Well, by my watch, we have gone four of the six added minutes and Celtic. Tony Hayes challenges for that one. And that's a throw in and a shell shocked home support and a shell shocked home team. They pressed for the equaliser, instead they have conceded a second goal as the ball's hooked into the area. It's knocked towards Morelles with Julian, and hooked high in there by Scott Brown. Julian's had a fine game this afternoon, has his Scott Brown. Here comes Celtic again. Oh, wonderful skill from Incham to McGregor. McGregor driving forward over the halfway line. Still Callum McGregor. Goes forward down the left wing. Well, Neil Lennon will be absolutely delighted with his team's performance this afternoon. And Cham forward. Well, players win their first experience. And here comes Odson Edward. But still Odson Edward. Christie's in the middle. And a timely intervention from Katic. Here comes Celtic. Having to defend again. Morelis is certainly offside there. And he lobs it beyond the goalkeeper and behind for a goal kick. And we have got about 60 seconds left. It's so important. We, we spoke about the back four, Simon. You know, it's it, players are often judged as well and how they perform in these games. And 
El Hamid, Paul and Golly and Julian have been outstanding They've today. been fantastic. They've been fantastic. You know, El Hamid's had to come into the central area midway through the, the second half. Julian has won everything in the air. And even before he went off, Beton was fantastic as well. You had real good team performance here today. Started by Orton <coughs> Edwards' goal in the first half. Scott Brown takes up the play and Bauer on the overlap. Knocks it forward to the right back. Come on as a substitute. Well, that's a, a shocking challenge there by Flanagan on the new Celtic player. And in fact, red card. Yeah, he's been red carded for that. Is that, is that Jones actually? Yeah, it's Jones. Yeah, Jordan Jones red carded for a shocking challenge on the new Celtic player. So things go from bad to worse for the home side. They're down to 10 men. They're Losing by two goals to nil and ill discipline there. Yeah, it's a, cra a crazy challenge. He's hurt himself in the challenge as well, lumping off here, but stupid, stupid challenge. Well, we spoke about it before we came on here that uh, if Celtic play well and do well, there's only one set of fans you can hear, and, and I do enjoy hearing the Celtic fans singing just now. Yeah, fantastic. The boys in here, 800 of them. Loving it. Well, thankfully, Bauer back on his feet. <coughs> So Jordan Jones, his first experience of a Glasgow derby is short and not so sweet. He can one as a substitute, he's going off with a red card and Celtic have a free kick. And by my watch we've gone well past the six added minutes. And there indeed is the final whistle, Celtic with the victory, commanding performance, goals from Odson Edwards and Johnny Hayes has given Neil Lennon side all three points. Well, you can see how much it means to the Irishman. He'll be delighted with the way his team have performed and it was all about character this afternoon and Celtic showed that in abundance. It certainly was, Paul, we touched on it at the start of the game. In terms of the last twice we've visited Ibrox, we've not showed up at all uh, and the boys have really applied themselves from the first minute today. Defended well when we needed to, took the goals well. A great team performance for Celtic. Well, the Celtic players go over to celebrate in front of the Celtic fans and well they should, Neil Lennon go over to join them Fraser Foster with another clean sheet this afternoon well, the Celtic players certainly deserve that because they, they really dug deep and I think you saw it from the very first minute they, they had that kind of rugby style kick-off and then pinned Rangers deep into to their own half and from that point on they were really on the front foot Yeah, I don't, I don't really think... Apart from a couple of little breaks, Rangers didn't have a threat in the first half. They, they obviously came out second half and had a go. But Celtic defended really well when they had to. And as I said to you at the start of that second half, if we can win the ball quickly, with all their bodies flooded forward, with their threat, we almost did it a couple of times before the second goal, and then Johnny breaks brilliantly for the, the second goal and kills the game. Well, you can see Neil Lennon and Scott Brown celebrating together and Celtic have certainly been by far the better team this afternoon Hudson Edward with the first goal it was Mikey Johnson that drove through and set up the Frenchman and he coolly finished in the second half Alan McGregor had a, a few saves for all that Rangers maybe more of the ball in the second half Alan McGregor was still the busier of the two keepers he had the two fantastic saves just before the goal that would have killed the game quicker you know he had really two good saves with, the, uh, with his feet but we had we had other chances there, you know we caught him out the break in Chama with a couple of shots the one that came back he almost scores a rebound and thankfully even when Johnny breaks through and doesn't quite get away the first time it bounces back to him and he, he rolls it into the net well, Neil Lennon makes his way back across the pitch a very proud man, we've seen him do that many times as manager and player, he'll be so proud of his players this afternoon in the back of a European away game in Stockholm they have come here, they have shown why we are the champions, Celtic 4 wins out of 4 3 points clear at the top of the Premiership table and can you relax now Simon? Can relax now, can relax <laughs> now, enjoy this evening watch the highlights no, um, and Great team performance. Look at how much it means to, to Lenny there. I think out with that disappointment we all had, you know, in the Champions League, it's been a, a very good start to the season. It certainly has, and the Celtic players now making their way over towards the tunnel area. They have certainly enjoyed that victory this afternoon, as have we all. And I'm sure wherever you are watching or listening in the world in the Celtic TV, I'm sure you have certainly enjoyed a fantastic Celtic performance this afternoon, Simon. 
you're a lucky charm, you can come back. <laughs> I'd love to come back, as long as we keep winning. There's no better place to come and win. Well, it has been a wonderful day for the champions. Thanks for joining us in Celtic TV. Enjoy your celebrations and the rest of the weekend it has finished here at Ibrooks. Rangers nil, the champions too. Thank <laughs> you.